My name is Michael Brooks, and <laughs> uh, I'm really glad to speak here at DEF CON. Uh, this is my first time speaking here, and um, so far I've had a blast. Um, what we're talking about today is uh, attack chaining within uh, web applications, and particularly how CSRF can be used in attack chains. Um, we'll be talking about uh, um, high impact exploits, uh, as you will see. Also, this is, at the end of this talk, there will be an O-Day uh, vulnerability being uh, released with exploit code, uh, as well as some other goodies. Okay, let's get, oh. <laughs> okay, first of all, as a show of hands, who thinks CSRF is lame? Who thinks it is the lamest, lamest fly out there that people even take it seriously? Wow, okay, we got one. Wow, I'm surprised. Honestly, uh, I thought CSRF, even a year ago, I thought CSRF was the lamest vulnerability. I, I, I mocked uh, the OWASP for putting it as number five on, the, on our top 10 vulnerabilities. I, uh, I laughed at CVE numbers relating to CSRF until I started doing my own research. Right here, this is uh, a piece of HTML code and uh, it is sending a git request to cPanel web host manager and it changes your root password. That is right, remote root with CSRF. CSRF is, uh, the member, is, remote code, uh, is remotely exploitable flaw with the highest impact possible, and we will see more high impact flaws with CSRF. Uh, this is also, uh, it also affects embedded devices. In this case, I am uh, sea surfing on a Motorola surfboard cable modem, and I'm able to knock you offline just by you visiting my website. Um, anyway, um, now. What is the surface area problem in software? Um, in, to, in, to, in, uh, in code quality control, you can use uh, software to detect uh, how much of your code has been executed uh, during a test. And this is uh, a way of gauging a surface area, how much surface has been tested. Now, humans are bound to make mistakes. And eventually, they're going to make a, a mistake, a bug that a hacker can take advantage of. This is bugs per line of code. So when I'm talking about an sur attack surface, I'm talking about uh, places in the application where um, I could gain access. I could gain access to other flaws. Um, now, okay. Uh, uh, now, using uh, many parts of the application uh, are off limits to common users. For instance, administrative areas. However, these administrative areas can suffer from the exact same type of flaws. We're talking XSS, cross uh, SQL injection, and even worse, remote code execution flaws. But uh, these flaws are exploitable using CSRF. In fact, there might be more of these flaws available in, in the open world due to some common misconceptions. For instance, thoughts of a developer. <laughs> Why spend time validating input of someone I trust? He's the administrator. Why would he try and hack me? <laughs> a password is acquired. That should, that's enough to keep out an attacker. Thoughts of a hacker. Why should I look for a flaw I can't exploit? I mean, traditionally, when I went on a bug hunt, I would completely avoid the administrative area. There's no point in looking for a flaw there because I can't reach it. <laughs> Thoughts of users. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> users don't matter, so. <laughs> okay, now, how would we go about finding one of these flaws? And what we're using is a, uh, a web application scanner uh, called Wapiti. Uh, otherwise known as an attack spider. Uh, WPT is an open source scanner. However, uh, 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 the there's a talk after this in track four for a Grendel scan. I highly recommend everyone check out this scanner. It is very good. Um, unfortunately, during, when I was doing this research, uh, WPT is what I used. Okay, we'll go through uh, some of the steps for setting up, uh, setting up this scan. Uh, the type of software that we're attacking is uh, TBDEV. This is a, uh, a software that's uh, used in private BitTorrent communities, such as uh, Oink, Rest in Peace, or Demonoid. Uh, these communities are secretive because they're breaking the law, which means they get hacked, they can't go to the FBI. <laughs> the FBI's looking for them. <laughs> okay. Um, I do all of my auditing within a virtual machine. Uh, this way I don't expose my workstation to attack, I, I can damage the machine, and I can easily restore with a copy. I can run multiple VMs at, a same, at the same time. Um, I also can finely tune uh, configurations specifically for a test, and we'll talk more about that. Now the first steps. 
is to install tbdev. It installs fairly normally if you've ever installed a PHP MySQL application. You shouldn't have any trouble with tbdev. We need to create an administrative account uh, as standard. Um, in terms of the PHP, uh, go back. In terms of the uh, PHP settings, we want to uh, make sure that display errors is on. This is very important in uh, all uh, web application scanning. Many vulnerabilities are detected by the application reporting uh, that an error has occurred. For instance, a MySQL error. This is crucial for the detection of some flaws. However, it doesn't matter for XSS. XSS is not looking for uh, errors to take place. Um, also, for this case, um, I'm leaving my uh, Magic Quotes GPC on, although I recommend uh, also scanning your applications with Magic Quotes GPC off. Um, you'd have to know a bit more about how this works, but it's a security feature that uh, can prevent many types of SQL injection. Um, it's a good thing. This is being removed in PHP 6, and this is a very good thing. The reason why is because uh, programmers would become overly reliant on, on uh, the security of Magic Quotes, and Magic Quotes is not bulletproof, so more flaws are, be are becoming uh, popular. I, I suggest scanning with both at this time. Uh, with, um, yeah, with if it, oh, scan it once with it on, and then once uh, again with it off. Um, anyway, yes. Uh, WPT. WPT is a great tool. Uh, it is a command line only application. Can be difficult to use. Uh, it's fairly solid. Um, one advantage it has over Grendel Scan is that it, it contains less bugs. However, Grendel blows it out of the water in terms of uh, features. Okay, th this is uh, the first part of WPT is that uh, because we're scanning a, an authenticated area, we need the session ID of the administrator. This is a command line application uh, uh, here called gitcookie.py. And uh, we're accessing, uh, I'm giving it the location to the login form, in this case, uh, slash login.php. It's going to grab the HTML and tell me what's on the form. It's going to say there's a, there's a username and a password. And I gave it the username, admin, and the password, password. Now, this is, uh, this is we start, uh, if you might notice something, the cookie's name is called pass. And it looks like an MD5 hash. Um, in my mind, this is a red flag. Um, but we'll get, more, we'll get more to that later. This is the first indication that there may be a problem with the session handler. Um, now, if we use gitcookie.py again, we'll actually get the exact same session va value again. Uh, the, this, uh, uh, this 32 character of uh, hex called pass. Again, this is not good. This is a, this is, uh, a lot of evidence supporting that they're using uh, an immortal session identifier. Uh, w which we'll talk about more in a, in a bit. It turns out um, I uh, that um, it's true. They're using the, uh, your session ID is the MD5 hash of your password. Okay, now first of all, why are people still using MD5? It has been broken for four years, and yet people are still introducing it to their code. Th this is a violation of OWASP's uh, uh, secure cryptographic storage, I believe it's number eight, uh, but people are still doing it. Perhaps you don't know better. Uh, the SHA-2 family is secure. So SHA-256, SHA-384, and SHA-512, any of those. Very secure functions, and you, you, uh, you won't have to worry about attack. Um, but furthermore, we actually don't have to, uh, have to attack the MD5 hash. It is a password. It, it, is, it is an uh, effect um, that, that their username and password is in clear text. We don't have to break the MD5 hash. It in itself is the session ID. So if we're able to steal uh, this, this identifier, we'll be able to log on to the application indefinitely, or at least until they change their password. OK, this is a broken session handler. Again, an OWASP violation. OK, um, uh, now th this we're going to save for later. We, we know we've already detected one vulnerability, and we haven't even started the scan. <laughs> so now, now we're going to start the scan, and we're doing it with um, Oh, uh, now there, there's some considerations with this type of scanning. Uh, you have to worry about certain requests that may break the scan or make the uh, application no longer available. In many cases, you would want to avoid such as uh, a logout function, logout.php, which would destroy the session. In this case, logout.php is purely cosmetic. The session ID stays the same regardless. So, however, we have to avoid changing the password. So um, this dash, uh, dash x, uh, at the very ba uh, bottom is uh, excluding the my.php, which allows you to change your uh, password. Anyway, uh, it scans fairly quickly, and the re here are the results. Um, 
we find a reflective XSS hole in reader.php. Uh, this is uh, accessible by everyone. So now, uh, th this is actually very good news. Uh, using this hole alone, uh, we could uh, potentially steal a, a user account of someone on the system. We could steal their session ID, and we could use that uh, again uh, indefinitely. We, we could hijack a user's account on this BitTorrent community indefinitely. Um, and however, it gets worse. There are more, there are more flaws that are found. Uh, the next flaw, th now this is uh, far more interesting. This is a stored XSS, uh, otherwise known as persistent. And it is in the best place possible. It is in index.php. What this means is that you're able to change the very the landing page. Uh, the very landing page of the application can be whatever you want it to be, including the ability to steal other people's session IDs or deface the page altogether. And we will, I'll show you an, uh, an example. Now, there's a, there's a trick with this. This uh, uh, flaw is only accessible in the administrative area. And you're thinking, like, well, Damn, I mean, uh, I wouldn't, I, I can't, I, I'm not able to hit this flaw unless I, I'm able to use an administrative account. Okay, well, that's where CSRF comes in. Another word for CSRF is session writing. When we look at the, uh, the output of, of this, uh, of this, uh, this scan, we know that it is already vulnerable, it is also vulnerable to CSRF. Uh, the reason why is because you can see it says uh, news.php and they're sending a git action, uh, git action here, uh, th that is one parameter, and then it's sending a post of body, and that's it. Uh, you, in CSRF, you're looking for um, a, uh, another value to accompany it uh, called a cryptographic no once. Uh, in essence, this is a randomly generated number that, uh, is that the attacker is unable to guess. So, not only is this a stored XSS hole, but it's also cross uh, CSRF. Um, now, if they were uh, sanitizing for cross-site scripting, uh, it would still be a CSRF flaw. And that would be, uh, it would take the manifestation of uh, the ability to post a news article to the, very fr to the front page. The news would say like, oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know, uh, the ad administrators eat babies. Like, I mean, you could put whatever you want. Uh, in this case, it is more powerful due to the, uh, Stored XSS. Yeah, stored XSS and index.php. Uh, anyway, uh, analyzing the results. Now, uh, there's a way to verify that it is, uh, in fact, CSRF. In this case, I built a uh, very simple form, uh, HTML form, that is recreating the request. Uh, it's sending the body value of owned. And I'm using JavaScript at the bottom to automatically s submit the news, the news article. Uh, this was the first uh, step I had in um, exploit development, to just to, uh, to have some uh, very simple proof of concept. Uh, if you're still unsure about XSS uh, security, uh, if you're a bit of a novice, uh, I suggest the OWASP uh, has some great uh, information on it, including uh, testing for OWASP, as well as uh, a, a, CSR, or a CSRF tester project. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but... Uh, all the power to them. Uh, I think it's uh, interesting. It's interesting. Okay. Now, uh, this is where we start. Um, we start uh, start building chains. Um, yeah. Okay. Good further ahead. All right. Um, now, in order to uh, the, the request is uh, bouncing between the system. It is bouncing between. Uh, your web browser, and it is bouncing off of a uh, 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 a reflective XSS flaw. I mean, a reflective surface, reflective like a mirror, even. Well, it's also able to. Uh, you can bounce a request off of it. However, there's a problem when you, your request is sending from um, from your web browser to the server. Uh, it's going to be hit by an add slashes or, or magic quotes. Uh, in essence, what this means is uh, you're going to have problems uh, having JavaScript with quote marks. Uh, luckily, JavaScript has a tool called uh, string from char code, uh, but they don't have the inverse. So I had to write a function to um, uh, to encode all of my JavaScript before sending it through. And I'll show you I'll show you the exploit code shortly. Okay. Now this may seem a bit redundant. However, uh, there's a method to my madness. Uh, we we're using a mix of reflective XSS and social engineering in order to pull off this flaw. 
we have to get the administrator to click on a link in order for us to in order for us to hit it. So the best way, uh, <laughs> or this is the best way I thought of doing this, is making the the link appear as though it is peering, uh, coming from his own website. All right, and that's where the reflective XSS comes into play. Uh, we're sending uh, we. We send the administrator a, uh, a, a, a private message on the system saying, hey, I think there might be a problem with, uh, the, with your uh, TB dev uh, installation. This link just doesn't look quite right. You click on the link and then your, uh, the exploit code fires. This exploit code is uh, entirely self-contained URL. It is a fire and forget, does not require an external server, uh, and is uh, rather small. Um, in fact, uh, I, uh, I'll show you the code right now. All right, um, I, I made this easy to use. <laughs> I try to. Uh, I mean, this is written entirely in HTML and JavaScript. Uh, you don't need a web server to run it. You just have to run it on your local system. Uh, I, I figured even if you've never uh, used exploit code before, you might be able to use this. Um, I, I give some explanation of, of how, how it is used. But it, uh, all it requires is the, uh, the, the target, the location of the TB dev install that you're looking for, the script that, you, that you'd want to execute on index. Um, uh, on the index.php. In this case, uh, we're, we're changing the, uh, the inner HTML to a, uh, an image, you'll see shortly. And then click generate attack. Uh, a URL is generated for us down here. Um. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, this is what TBDev looks like. Um, simple. You could browse for um, browse for torrents, search torrents, as, as well as a community. Um, now, to simulate as if the administrator were to click on that link, um, I'm just going to paste it. Uh, if you look at the link, it actually uh, it does look suspicious. Uh, you can see there are a lot of uh, Numbers and uh, it's uh, co commented or uh, quoted out. Uh, it would be it looks similar to shellcode. However, uh, this is to uh, evade the add slashes filtering. Now enter, redirecting you. <laughs> it's defaced. <laughs> Simple. It is still defaced. This is uh, index.php. Uh, the page has been changed. The only way to reverse it is you'd have to uh, you have to log into the uh, SQL database and actually delete the news article. <laughs> Here, which I'll do now. Empty. Okay. Okay. Um, let's talk a bit more about uh, how, how would you, how would you want to uh, gain access to the community in the first place? Um, many of these communities do require invites, and it would be nice to gain access uh, to these. Uh, so. Um, I'll, I'll show you a simple cookie stealing uh, code. Uh, the PHP is very simple. In fact, it's only two function calls uh, and a single variable. Uh, the first line here is saying uh, get, get the file contents of a file we call cookie.txt. So whatever's in that file, we're going to pull it out. Uh, then we're going to uh, put. Uh, then we're going to open that con uh, that file for uh, writing, and we're going to take whatever uh, cookie. Uh, whatever parameter, whatever get parameter we see as cookie, and we're going to write it. So in essence, this is going to give you a, uh, if you were to put this script at, on the index.php, uh, everyone who is logged in, their cookie value would be uh, entered into this file, uh, separated by new lines. And you could immediately log in as any one of those people. Uh, so this is a very serious combination of having a broken session handler and being able to literally steal everyone's authentication on, on the system uh, using, a, uh, using this combination. Um, who am I? Okay. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about defense. Um, yeah, one moment. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, limiting the access of the administrator account is a good idea. I mean, you shouldn't have cross-site scripting flaws in this area or, or other vulnerabilities. I mean, it's common in, in the Linux world to use uh, uh, 
uh, uh, chroots to uh, limit, limit the, uh, the ability of super users. Uh, and it is also absolutely important to apply CSRF protection to administrative areas. Um, uh, CSRF is a popular attack against Google because uh, since you don't have access to the source code, uh, it is able to identify this flaw and write exploit code uh, by merely looking at the requests uh, by, and looking at the, yeah, at, at the traffic. Uh, many, okay, many CSRF protection mechanisms can be bypassed using XSS. Using XSS, you're able to read the page itself, uh, which breaks the uh, same origin policy. Using uh, XML HTTP requests, you're able to read the, uh, the CRS uh, RF uh, cryptographic no ones uh, in order to bypass it. This is the same technique that the SAMI worm used. Uh, and I wrote exploit code to, uh, I wrote a similar exploit code uh, actually utilizing some of his functions. Uh, what it did was, uh, what it does is, uh, it, uh, here, wait a minute. Hold up. Yeah. It, uh, it, it affects a uh, open source. Uh, okay, uh, it affects. Uh, there's an open source clone of the site uh, dig.com. Uh, it's called Plig. Plig is the open source copy. And uh, if you're familiar with Dig, people post a link, and you vote up if you like it or vote down if you don't like it. Uh, what my exploit code does is. Uh, when you, upon viewing the link, it forces you to vote on. It, fo it forces you to vote up on a plug link. Uh, uh, now, and the same attack could work against dig if you had a cross-site scripting flaw against dig. Uh, in fact, my source code, uh, my exploit code, could be modified to attack dig. Uh, this uh, this has impl uh, implications for uh, mostly spammers, for, for to which to uh, redirect people to their uh, their spam site. Not very good. Um, let's continue. Gotcha. Um, th this attack was recently, uh, I recently uh, put it on my blog, uh, rooksecurity.com, uh, uh, as well as other attacks I, I've posted on there. Uh, there's a, a, another flaw I found in Plague. Uh, it turns out their, their CAPTCHA implementation was broken, and I was able to uh, bypass, uh, find the CAPTCHA code. I wasn't attacking the image, I was uh, attacking more of an issue of uh, how the code was generated. I was able to predict what, what the code was uh, able to be. And it's a, which, is, which is another bad combination, the ability to create accounts and then uh, also vote on, uh, vote on links. Uh, now, uh, even with, oh yeah, that's like auto voter. Now, okay, so you, say you have problems with uh, cross-site scripting and you have problems with uh, CSRF. And you need you need a solution uh, now. You need a more difficult solution now, or a uh, a solution that is difficult to bypass. The uh, OWASP suggests uh, even protecting it with a CAPTCHA. Uh, th this value could not be read by uh, by means of XSS, uh, and it would be a reasonable defense. Uh, another method would be use a side channel, such as uh, emailing you a password via a, a SMS, text message, or even email, uh, an out of band signal. Um, Okay, now there's another problem with CSRF that really keeps it from being a, um, a series of uh, very widespread. Uh, one, when you're building a request, you have to know where that request is going. You have to know the path and you have to know the server. However, uh, <laughs> Spy Dynamics released a very cool tool, uh, a JavaScript port scanner. <laughs> Now, the port scanner uses two different methods for detecting, uh, for detecting services. Uh, one of them is onload and on error, uh, and it's looking at the response times from requests. Uh, this method, I can't get to work reliably for a real world exploit. However, it, there's another method used. Uh, what you're able to do is you're able to read a remote image on a system. Uh, and if you, know, if you know the path to the image, you can read it, the file dimensions. And using this method, you are uh, able to identify uh, uh, embedded, network, embedded network hardware. In fact, this is a, uh, a SNOM uh, Linux, uh, it's not phone, VoIP phone, it's a SIP, SIP client. It's running a, an embedded Linux 2.4 system and using, 
uh, using this method, it's, uh, uh, I'm able to detect this modem on the network, or uh, able to detect this phone on the network, and then, uh, and then hack it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the exploit code is, I can't show you it right now. <laughs> but uh, it's a pretty cool system. Uh, wh what's actually made worse about this is that uh, you're able to, uh, by, you're able to attack an internal network over someone's browser. And uh, this particular CSRF law, literally every, requ every request on the system is vulnerable to CSRF, including the feature to update the firmware. Now, because uh, SNOM, is, SNOM is obeying the, G, uh, the GNU public license, and all of their source code is, uh, is available for the device, and you're able to build your own custom firmware, including a root-kitted firmware, and have your own root-kitted Linux system uh, on an internal corporate network. Um, un I, in all honesty, I'm not uh, very familiar with the building of uh, hacked embedded systems, but if you are, please come talk to me. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to build some uh, backdoored firmware. I think it'd be fun, particularly, uh, also, SNOM wasn't the only one. Uh, in fact, I, uh, I bought two other VoIP phones and they were also vulnerable. Uh, the D-Link uh, phone as well as uh, a Zoom, a Zoom phone. Uh, uh, another, another attack scenario against, uh, that worked against all three phones was the ability to change what SIP server it was using. So you could, uh, you could force the phone into using a malicious SIP server, uh, pr perhaps even uh, intercepting calls. There's also proxy servers supported on many of them. Uh, the ability to listen in on uh, telephone conversations. Okay. In all honesty, uh, I'm, I'm done with CSRF. It's, I think it's interesting. I think that a lot of people uh, have passed it off as being uh, lame. And uh, it, it gets a lot of bad flack. I mean, GNU Citizen was nominated for a Pony Award, even though I thought that uh, uh, their attack against the BT Hub was cool. Uh, but it, in re all reality, that's, that's not the problems that we face on the internet today. Um, the problems are botnets, uh, large controlled systems, uh, of computers that uh, are even waging wars, <laughs> uh, wars, wars of spam, and that that is actually my ode. Uh, my ode. This is uh, this is DefCon, and uh, it is a unique place where you have uh, you have people on both sides of the war. You have the, the blackest of the black hat sitting next to systems administrators and software quality control. You're literally sitting next to your enemy in a brutal war. And um, uh, I'm, very, I'm very proud to, uh, to drop this. This is uh, a very good exploit. <laughs> As an example, uh, it affects uh, none other than the Copper Mine Photo Gallery, which if you don't know, uh, there should be around, uh, oh, <laughs> there, hmm. um, don't have the Google hack on hand, but it's around five million sites are running this, uh, are running this. and uh, the exploit is the ability to uh, copy uh, any remote file <laughs> to, the, uh, to the system and execute it. You could copy PHP files. This is prime for worms. Uh, <laughs> Okay, um, I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done. Okay, even worse. Um, over the past over the past few years, I've been collecting worm code. Uh, I'm very I'm very happy with my worm code uh, collection. And if you go to rooksecurity.com slash uh, uh, goodiebag.zip. Okay, in goodiebag.zip. There are source code for over 50 viruses and worms with uh, Visual Studio build files. We have malware such as MPAC, two versions of MPAC, uh, MyDoom that builds and spreads, uh, <laughs> you name it. This is everything you need to build a your botnet of your own. You're talking uh, great outbreaks such as Blaster, MyTob, they're there. Uh, custom custom modules for your GoBot and FatBot, they're also uh, on this file. Goodiebag.zip. Uh, honestly, I hope someone downloads it. Also, the in this is a, a particularly devastating combination. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is uh, www. 
dot r o o k s e c u r i t y dot com slash g o o d i e b a g dot com. Please share it with your friends. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Please share it with your friends. Uh, this was this is years of, of compilation. Um, now, okay. Um, actually, I have a uh, here. Uh, I'm going to do a, a bit of a return to CSRF because uh, this actually relates to this flaw. Turns out. Uh, this flaw is also exploitable by CSRF, although it doesn't have to be. It is, is simply sending, uh, by sending a single get and post request, you're able to, um, uh, you're, you're able to uh, incur the flaw, incur the vulnerability. Um, here. It's actually uh, rather advanced. Uh, I'm using something called um, global variable manipulation, uh, which is advanced uh, PHP ha uh, hacking. Uh, it's, they are, they're containing, um, here, pull it up. All right, um, I don't know, uh, what? The URL again? It is rook, rooksecurity.com slash, uh, <laughs> make sure I get it right. Goodiebag.zip. Goodiebag I'll be posting it, I'll be posting it to my main page, rooksecurity.com, if you visit it. Uh, I'll be posting it after this, uh, after this talk. Uh, and again, uh, I encourage you to visit my blog. I do post O-Days regularly. Uh, very, uh, I understand, this is not, not good disclosure. <laughs> not, not wise disclosure. <laughs> Ethical? Ethics? <laughs> All right. Um, I, I, okay, the ability, the ability for, for this uh, flaw to, to work is actually um, a bit complex. And... Um, it's certainly more complex than CSRF. Uh, what I'm able to do, or what the code you are looking at here does, is uh, it's attempting to clean up the global namespace uh, of a PHP application. Um, however, uh, it contains a fundamental flaw. Uh, it, this array that is selected right here uh, contains um, what, vulnerab what uh, variables that it does not want to, uh, to, to unset or, or destroy. However, um, by unsetting this array, uh, I'm then able to uh, actually do something that sounds a bit counter, uh, counterintuitive. I'm unsetting the, uh, the other request methods. I'm unsetting, in fact, all, any variable sent as good as a git or a cookie is being unset. I'm also unsetting the request superglobal. The reason why is because when they're unset, it's not checking them uh, if a, a global variable has, leaked pa has been uh, sent Via that, uh, via that super global. I, I know I missed a lot of you, but what this allows me to do is basically it turns the entire variable namespace into a taint. I'm able to have an amazing amount of control over the application and really make it vomit up on itself. Uh, in this case, uh, I, the next step is literally to go through and uh, look for uh, syncs. In this case, uh, the sync I'm, I'm uh, hacking is a call to copy. Um, now, copy is uh, much better than uh, other, uh, other syncs that you've heard of, such as uh, re uh, require once, require or include. The reason why is because um, it has to do with uh, copy by d on a default PHP. You can pass it uh, a parameter of a URL, and it'll download that URL and, uh, uh, to your local system. Whereas uh, include can include remote uh, code. However, um, by default, it does not allow this. Uh, this, in order for this vulnerability to work, you do have to have registered globals enabled. Um, however, uh, uh, and this is not default on the latest version of PHP. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, in, uh, in short, uh, uh, if, if any of you are curious about this exploit code, uh, I encourage you to come to the question and answers afterwards. Um, uh, the code will be posted to my blog shortly if you, uh, if you wish to see it at that time uh, or at a later date. Uh, uh, one, of the, um, one of the major points of this... Uh, 
the ability the ability to use uh, the resources around you um, without that there aren't necessarily a, a clear vulnerability, such as the spy dynamics flaw has been um, has been known about for years, yet uh, it is un it's been unpatched, um, and it allows uh, you to identify um, uh, it allows you to identify local embedded systems. Uh, there, are, there are other issues, though. Uh, the ability to send uh, Get and post get and post requests anywhere on the internet allows you to um, use web browsers as a means of uh, as a proxy server even to break into other systems. Uh, in fact, because because this particular flaw uh, can be exploited by uh, by a cross uh, by a cross browser or cross site request, uh, you can in garrison uh, any 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 uh, web browser visiting your site, even if it's a fully patched web browser, can still be turned can still be made of use. You can force them into hacking other uh, uh, other servers. Uh, that's multiplying your bandwidth. In fact, uh, and the URL that you, that you choose to download, it could be anything online. For instance, uh, uh, a good example is uh, SourceForge. SourceForge.net has uh, a CVE, um, Common Versioning uh, System, C uh, CVS. Uh, and in the CVS, you can, uh, you can host raw text files. So uh, in essence, you could take, uh, for instance, MPAC or, uh, or a backdoor and uh, host it as a SourceForge project and then being able to use that to, uh, to get uh, to, uh, to exploit other systems. You're using SourceForge's bandwidth uh, to uh, transfer your, your backdoor, and you're using uh, common clients to visit your site to attack, other, uh, to attack them. All, all your server is doing, all, all the server that you actually own, all it is doing is having a list of, uh, of other sites to attack. So you're giving it a list, hey, uh, start attacking this site, and, uh, and it will continue about its normal business. It's key that the, the, the site that you own, that you have uh, remote code execution on, you don't want this to be detected. You want this under your control as long as possible. And so uh, you, it, it would not be wise to use this system in uh, a denial of service attack or others. Um, uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I suppose that, that concludes my talk. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, uh, I hope you download, uh, download my worm code and use my, uh, use my exploit code. Uh, it makes me, makes me happy.